we have learned about a simple way of authentication using a user id and password however if you want to run your snowpark client program using a service account and you don't want to share or have a password for the service account you can use key pair authentication the documentation for this type of authentication is not very clear in snowflake snowpark docs in this video we will explore how key pair or rsa based authentication work and how to set it up Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this Snowpark hands-on playlist. I am going to use VS Code Editor to run my Snowpark program that uses Python version 3.8.16 and Snowpark version 1.3.0. These videos are recorded in 4K resolution. Follow the instruction for better resolution and to learn it faster. Before we proceed, I have a quick announcement. I have published more than 100 videos covering different topics under different playlist and if you find it hard to get into a specific topic or a subtopic or a specific concept use this summary card for a quick search summary card download instruction is given in the description below for additional queries or a specific question feel free to drop me a note to my instagram account let's generate the key pair and before that Let's quickly understand what is key pair authentication and how does it work. The key pair authentication is a method of verifying the identity of a user in a secure manner. It involves the use of two cryptographic keys, a public key and a private key. The public key is like a lock and the private key is like the key that can open the lock. The public key is shared with a server while the private key is kept securely on your own device. We will not cover how RSA key authentication works in detail in this short video. We would rather see how to generate these keys in your local machine, how to update your user profile in Snowflake, and then what all libraries are required to establish a connection between your Snowpark and Snowflake. So let's jump into our VS Code editor. This is my program called Snowpark with RSA. In this program, first, we will see how the basic authentication works with Snowpark. This is a method called Snowpark underscore basic underscore auth. I am passing the account ID, username, and password, and this represents a basic authentication. I am using the session.builder.config by passing the connection parameter and creating the session object. Let's run this program. This is how it has established a connection using a basic authentication mechanism. So this is my session ID ending with 9766. And if I go to my SnowSite web UI, open my query history tab, let's see how does it look like. So when I come to this screen, so here I can see my session ID, which is connected using my Snowpark program. So this connection I have established using basic authentication. Let's follow this three-step process where we are first going to generate public and private key followed by updating the user in this case snowpark01 and set its rsa public key equals to the public key value and then finally change our python program to make sure that it uses the public and private key to establish a connection with snowflake snowflake already has a documentation about key pair authentication and key pair rotation where it clearly explains how to generate the rsa key i am going to use same instruction to generate an unencrypted version by following this command so let me copy this command so if you look into this command it says open ssl gen rsa it is using 2048 bit and finally the output of this command is input for the another open ssl command where it is generating private key now my private key is generated successfully and let's see how does it look like so the file exists here now next step is to generate the public key here it is taking this pem private key and generating public key so it has written the rsa key and let's check that so this is my rsa key so we have completed step one now the next step that i have to take the public key and update my user by setting the public key against the field rsa public key for that user so let me copy this content so this is my alter statement and while running this alter statement i am using account admin rule 
Now let's execute this alter statement. So my alter statement got executed where RSA public key for snowpark01 user is set to this text value. All good. So my step two is done. Now I am going to proceed for step three. To establish a connection between your snowpark and snowflake, you need to import some additional libraries. And those libraries are called cryptography libraries. You can follow pip install cryptography and all the necessary libraries will be installed and you have to import from line number four to line number seven. Once it is installed successfully, the next I am loading the private key and my private key reside in this location. And this is how my code looks like. The next statement on line number 18 is going to get private key text. Once you get the private key text, then I am writing another method called snowpark underscore key underscore auth. I am establishing a connection with my account with my user id and i am specifying private key value equals to the private key text so by having this set of statement you enable your snowpark program to establish a connection without any password now i am getting a session through my rsa key and let's see how does it work so if you look into the basic authentication method versus snowpark key authentication method the first method is accepting user id password the second method is not accepting any password it is just working based on the user id and pair key authentication now since these are two different mechanisms to establishing a connection from your local machine both of them will print a different session id let's see it so here the session id with basic authentication is 0270 and here it is 0274 Let's go back to our SNO site. 0274 belongs to your RSA key based authentication and 0272 belongs to basic authentication. However, it is difficult to identify through the query history whether it is a basic authentication or RSA key authentication. For that, you have to go to the account usage login history view and from there you can get the complete detail. Let me run a query for you. So my query got executed successfully and if you look into this two line item, it clearly says that this login has happened using RSA key pair and all other authentication has happened through the password. So by importing these cryptography libraries and by having your public key and private key, you can establish a connection between your Snowpark program and Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse. All the source code is available in my blog page and you can find the blog page reference link below in the description section. I hope you have enjoyed this quick hands-on guide and if you have any feedback please leave your comment in the description section below. Thank you for watching, keep learning and keep growing.